Recording in progress.
Our sincere prayer, as we say this song, is that we will indeed awake from our slumber, and we will arise from our sleep and possess the gates in Jesus' name. Amen. for all the special numbers that we have had already this morning. Without wasting much time, we will now hand over for the theme talk one this morning. We want to invite our elder and our father, Brother Bile Akoni from Boko to bring us the first talk for our meeting this morning. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity of being alive at a time like this. Thank you, God, that you did say that prophets and older men, they longed for, to see this day, but it was not given to them. Thank you, God, that we are the generation 
upon which the end of the age has come. We are that generation that you have ordained to see the glory of the Lord and the fulfillment of prophecy. And so this morning, Father, we are praying that as you have been speaking since we gathered, you will yet speak with us. You will give us direction. You will inspire our heart. You will let your word mix with faith within us. You give us a heart that fears you, a heart that longs to obey your word, a heart that desires to stand for the truth that we might become that generation, that generation to whom you are commanding, open the gates and let the nation that has the truth, let them come in and take over. Lord, we are praying that we will be such men and women now and that in all the nations of the world, you'll be calling forth seeds that will possess the gates. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. As we have been following what God had been doing with us, and if you have also been listening carefully and keenly, since we gathered this morning, you will see that there's a passion in the heart of God. And just as the prayer uh, was, uh, the prayer team was called, and we're looking at the heart that possesses the gates as an issue of prayer, I felt again that God was confirming that the need for us to look at the seed that can possess the gate. So this morning I'll be looking at the seed that can possess the gate. The seed that God can take to the gate. And the passages we have been considering, Genesis 22 and Psalm 24, we will be looking at them again more closely as the Lord will guide us this morning. And I'll read again Genesis 22. Our brothers have referred to it this morning, but we will need now to look at it and study it and trust God to help us. And he said from verse 16, by myself, have I sworn, <clears throat> says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. May the Lord bring insight into his word in our midst this morning even as we will be studying. I want all of you to please take that scripture because there's so much in that little set of verses that we need to have an understanding such that by the grace of God, before we'll be releasing ourselves out of the cycle this year to go and possess gates, we have to have an understanding what kind, what kind of seed can possess the gate. But the first thing I want you to look, which is very touching to my heart, is to look very closely in that verse 17, verse 17, all of you please look at it. He said that in blessing, I will bless you 
and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let me read it again. I feel that as I read it, the Holy Spirit will strike your heart to understand what we are talking about this morning. Now, look at that scripture again. He said that in blessing, I'll bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. Now, that's the first thing that appears like a complete. If you are talking on multiplying seed, I thought it would be I will multiply your seeds. But it looks to me as if the seed is singular. And as if even when God is going to multiply, he said, I will multiply, in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. Not seeds, not seeds, but the seed. You know, as I kept looking at the word of God, and I came again, I said, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. So, what are we talking about here? As if no matter the number of multiplication, even as the stars of heaven that has become innumerable, even as the, uh, the sand on the seashore that nobody can count it will still be the seed. So that implies that there are no two, three seeds that can possess the gates. And this is the first issue that we have to agree upon so that in moving from this meeting, we will be asking for God to multiply men and women that carry the seed. He said, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Even though he has been multiplied as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, it is thy seed that shall multiply, that shall possess the gates of his enemy. And in thy seed, not seeds, not seeds, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Do you understand that God is saying, in thy seed, that singular seed, that particular seed, that one seed that has been multiplied like the stars of heaven, that is being multiplied as the sand on the seashore, in that seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You know, when God came to speak to Adam and Eve after the serpent did the damage, after they went into disobedience, God spoke in Genesis chapter 3. I want to repeat it because I want you to understand that there is the seed 
that God has been talking about. And we must have a clear picture of what that it is if we are going to possess the gate. And this is important. I'm just so convinced that there's going to be multiplication. There's going to be uh, a, a multiplying of the seed in all the nations of the earth, but it will be that one seed. Not two kinds, not three kinds, but that kind of seed, one seed that possess the gates. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, and if you look at what verse 15 says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. God was talking to Satan, talking to the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise your head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. So God began to speak about the seed that will bruise the head of the serpent. The seed that will bring to final defeat and conclusion the activity of the enemy. And when the Lord Jesus Christ came into the earth, the fulfillment, the release of that seed that we possess the gates began to be fulfilled. And no wonder as soon as he came into the earth, demons, principalities, and powers, the God of this world, they became jittery. They did everything to see whether they can quickly put him off the stage. I don't have the space to discuss all that happened and all that happened. But this morning, if God was saying that in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed, what we then need to discuss now is that seed. That seed. That seed runs through scripture. Run through scripture. One of the passages that brought it back again, even though in passing as if it is not connected, but it's connected. Look at what he said in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. All of you, please, if you can get to 1 John chapter 3. We have quoted it in other contexts, but I want you to look at it again this morning. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 9. Now, let's read from verse 8 and then end in verse 9. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why? For his seed, his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So permit me now to quickly note that the seed that possesses the gate or that can possess the gate it's not two, it's not three. It's not diverse. It's one seed that must be multiplied as the star of the heaven. One seed that must be multiplied as the sand of the seashore. One seed through whom all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. One seed that whenever anybody carries that seed, 
sin can no longer have dominion over him. Whensoever anyone has carried that seed, he carries within himself the overcomer. That seed, that when he has found residence in any man's heart, that man is set to rule at the gates. Not because of his own energy, not because he is a very, very uh, intellectually uh, sound, even though he would be intellectually sound, not because he has money, but because he carries the seed. So if there is going to be possessing of gates, as God is beginning to show us that we've got to go and possess the gates of his enemies. And God is raising a generation of men and women that, we, that can possess the gate. Let us right here and now deal with what is that seed that can possess the gate. And you can see now that without controversy, in a very short moment, we are beginning to see that that seed, that seed, that singular seed, that peculiar seed is Jesus. That seed that God began to speak about in Genesis chapter 3, that God began to speak about when an illustration was demonstrated in the life of Abraham, even though we saw Abraham, God saying, your only son, the one you love, you must bring him out to a mountain and lay him down there. And he took his only son, his only begotten son, and he took him out and laid him down as a bond offering. It was at that instant that God brought back again this covenant. Because you have not withheld your son from me, I also swear by myself that in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. So please take note that it was not a mistake. It was not a, a grammatical error that God was speaking only of one singular seed. And that even though God was saying to Abraham, if anybody can count the number of your children, I mean, if anybody can count the stars of heaven, or if anybody can number, what is uh, uh, the sand on the seashore? So will anybody be able to number your children? Yet, as many as that children will be, they carry only one seed. And anybody that does not have that seed is none of his. Anybody that does not carry that seed even if he is lumped together in the midst of a great congregation and is part of those that are singing and shouting Hosanna, but he does not have that seed living, walking, operating in him, he is none of such who could possess the gates. Actually, he will be possessed at the gate. Any man that does not carry this life, any man that does not have this particular seed, has no capacity to possess the gate for God. So I felt very seriously this morning that before we can go on, we've got to settle this issue. That all of you have gathered all over the world, and I praise God. I praise God for the way the Holy Spirit 
is doing something at the same time globally. I praise God for all our centers in all different parts of the country and countries. Yet, what God wants to multiply, what God wants to increase, what God wants to spread across the nations is the seed. Is the seed, he said, in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. This seed, this seed that can possess the nation, this seed that can possess the gates, this seed that God himself has raised to possess the gate of his enemy is only the seed that can do the job. Anything else, anyone else, no matter how zealous they are, take them to the gates. They will not only disgrace you, they will be captured. In fact, they will become captives of those people at the gates. That's why we have had so many people who wanted to go out, who wanted to be in politics, who wanted to be in, in business, they want to be in banking and finance, they want to be a place where men are making money. And even though they seem to carry the name Christian, and everybody say, well, it's a Christian brother there, it's a sister there, and you wonder why they could not make a change, they could not make a difference at the gate, they actually became captives. They actually became captured and they have since been lost and they have only brought disgrace to the name of our glorious Lord. What is the reason? They have the name, they have the physical appearance, they have the language, but they do not have the seed. They have the language, they have the songs, they have the appearance. But when God looks into their heart, something was omitted. Something was, was, was not there. What was that? The seed that can conquer at the gate. And so this morning, without taking too much of your time, it will be important for us to ask very, very important questions this morning. Do you have the seed? Do you have the seed? Because what God is wanting to multiply in this time, I sat back, I said, God, so what are you doing? What have we been commissioned? To go and do, is it just to gather people and say, oh, we have thousands, we have millions of people that are coming together. Is that all about it? Is it so that we can also join the club of people who say, ah, is the, they have the greatest something? No. God knows that we are not such ambitious. But there's, it's, there's a need now for God to multiply the seed that will possess the gate. And that seed is no one else but Jesus Christ, the Lord, in the heart of man. The only hope that we can possess the gate is only in one matter. What is in that one matter? That it is the seed that is in you that you are carrying to the gate. If that seed is absent, there's nothing to talk about. You are going to be captured. You are going to become a captive. You are going to become a victim. Because the only one thing that can possess gates, and the devil knows it, is this particular seed that God is talking about. 
Now, I'd like to quickly make a very quick contrast. And that contrast, let's speak it quick, quickly so that we can pray together this morning. What is that? What is that contrast? In the book of Romans, let's quickly go to Romans. In Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, we have been having reasons to look at Romans chapter 8 in the past few days. Some of you that have been following some of our meetings, you will see that God had been making us to speak into Romans chapter 8 because it looks critical at a time like this so that we can uh, be very deliberate and very definite about what God is asking us to do at this critical time because there is a cause, there's a reason. Something must happen now. Something must take place now. Time for fulfillment of prophecy had come. Time for the kind of men and women that must be multiplied in the nations has come. But not just any kind. It must be the men and women carrying the seed, the right seed. Now, in Romans chapter 8, and permit me to ask you to read verse 1. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. And then we'll go quickly to verse 7, verse 8, verse 9. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of, the, of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now you see a constant contrast coming. Two categories of men and women that we are beginning to touch there. Those who walk after the flesh and those who walk after the spirit. Two classes or two species of men and women you will encounter all the time. One that has the seed, one that carries the flesh. Now, look at how the contrast was building up. Said so the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What it means that these two categories of people, they are also operating under two laws. If you are in the flesh, if all that you carry in your life is the life of the flesh or the natural, the law that governs that life, the law that operates that life. The, yes, I don't know how to, because the word law. It, 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 I, you see, if you are in science now, you will have understood that when we use the word law, we are not just thinking of legality in terms of the law in the court, even though that is also applicable. We are talking of principle. Like you say, the law of gravity. Or you talk about the law of flotation. Or you talk about, you see, when we talk about the law, we are talking about principles. 
that control, that governs, that dictates, that, that is the cause for everything to happen the way they have been happening. So when you are in the flesh, that is, when you have not collected the seed that we are talking about, you are under a different law. And what is this law? The Bible calls it the law of sin and death. When a man is not in Christ, when a man is in the flesh, there is a law that he must obey every day. What is the name of that law? Is the law of sin and death. It is by law that any man who is in the flesh must live to commit sin. It is by law that any man who has not the seed that God is talking about, he is bound, he is destined. He is, uh, yes, yes, he is, that's the right word. He's bound to obey the law of sin and of death. So whenever you see the law of sin, always controlling your life. Even though you, you prayed just now, but as you are rising from the place of prayer, the law of sin, the principle of sin, the principle of death, just settles down and say, yes, uh, let's continue. But you are just praying and say, oh God, I don't want to sin again. I don't want to sin again. I don't want to sin again. That doesn't matter. You are under a law. You are under a jurisdiction. You've got to obey that law, except you are taken out of that law. Except you are taken out of that jurisdiction. It is not possible for you to be under the principle of sin and death and not obey it. It's not possible. It's not possible for you to operate under an arrangement and not obey what obtains in that arrangement. So when a man is living the life of the flesh or the natural life, when a man is only living as a mere human being, born of a woman, and he has not experienced or he has not received the seed that can make him live on a different pedestal of life altogether, he is under law. Is under the principle of sin and of death. Please follow that because it's very important to where I'm going. Because I'm looking at the seed that can possess the gates. And we must not deceive ourselves if we will not multiply that seed in the nations, in the different, different sectors. In the different gates that we are looking at, we will only be making noise because the man at the gate, the principality at the gate, is only waiting. And thank God that Brother Peter, Brother James, who have spoken to us this morning, they said the gates are waiting. The entire generation of men and women, they are waiting for someone to come to that gate. Confront the mighty man sitting at the gate. Push him down. Take over the gate and release the captives. They are waiting. The entire world is waiting. Entire creation endlessly is waiting. Waiting, crying. And say so we have been subjected to corruption. This tyrant that is ruling us even the kingdom, the people in the world, they are tired of the rulership of Satan. Satan has not benefited even those that are loyal to him. Satan has not given them anything because there's nothing in his hand that is good that he can give. He can only give them evil. So everybody is crying, 
Who will release us? Who will take over the gates? But as we read this morning, the gates can only open to a generation of men and women that are coming with the seed. So this morning, look at the contrast I'm dealing with now. He said, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. One of the things that I want you to note is that when you leave the life of the flesh, permit me to tell you the truth. You may appear energetic on the outside, but you are weak. You may appear highly educated, and it's good that you are highly educated, but because the life you carry inside is the life of Mr. Flesh, as far as conquering Satan is concerned, you are weak. Even though you may be very enterprising and you seem to be very good in business and you can easily make money and it will look as if an enterprising man or woman like yourself, a very, very meticulous, clever person who can actually create good business like yourself, it will look as if he will take you to the gate. You can possess that gate. But because the life you carry is the life of the flesh, the flesh already makes you weak. And when you get to the gates, a weakling like yourself cannot confront the strong man of the house. When we get to the gate, a man who is weakened inside by the flesh, imagine that you are very, very wonderful, you are doing all of that. But because Mr. Flesh in you is a womanizer, this man is a commander. Is the commander of a whole army. But whenever he sees a woman, a girl, he becomes weak. Suddenly he will be running up and down, running up and down, just because he has seen a girl. And who is the commander of a whole army of a nation, he is a piece of bread when he sees a little girl. And that's why most of our commanders most of the people that you thought are very strong in our nations, they have fallen like a piece of bread even before young ladies. It is because whosoever carries the flesh is weak. The weakness is not lack of ammunition. The weakness is not lack of education. The weakness is not lack of finance. The weakness is not lack of intelligence. The weakness is the weakness of who you carry, the weakness that Mr. Flesh has brought upon your life. So if we are taking anybody to the gates, the first thing we have to check, what life does he carry? What seed does he carry? Does he carry the seed that can possess the gate? or he carries the nature, the natural man, Mr. Flesh, that is only subservient, is only a captive of the principalities at the gate. And this we have to settle uh, before we can do anything, particularly this morning, and before we can press on with what God wants to do while he's gathering us in this year's uh, student and the youth congress. Look at that scripture. Said, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. And I want you now to note that this verse was going to be the corollary unto, I mean, with. Genesis chapter 22, in that you did not withhold your own son, your only son, 
God did not withhold his son. What did he do? God gave his only begotten son. God released him to go and be laid on the altar like a burnt offering. He was released to go on the cross in order to create an opportunity that people like you and like myself may find a reason to be evacuated of the life that is weak, of the life that is always a victim of sin and of death, a life that can never, never overcome. God gave up his son. So that scripture said, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, he took our nature. And for sin, what did he do? He condemned sin in the flesh, hallelujah, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled, hallelujah, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. I want all of you to look at something there. Verse 4 is what I'm reading. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in, emphasis on in, might be fulfilled inside of us. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So what am I beginning to note here? You cannot be a seed that we possess the gates when that which weakens all men has not been conquered in your life. When the flesh, the sinful flesh that has brought the same nature into your life has not been condemned, has not been abolished, has not been has not been discarded in you. So the first thing we are dealing with now, for you to be a man or woman that can carry the seed that possesses the gates, something has to happen in you. Something has to happen in you. Please take note, I was emphasizing the word in. Not on, not on. When you use the word on, that is external. That's outward. Many, many people are trying to do something on you. Many people are talking to you about how to dress. They're talking to you about how to carry your body. They're talking to you about how to dress yourself and all of that. They are working on you. But the problem is not on you. It's not outside. It's not external. The problem that weakens you and weakens the nations is inside. And if it is not dealt with, if it is not condemned inside, if it is not discarded inside, if it is not abolished inside, you cannot be the seed or carry the seed that overcomes, that can possess the gates. My dear brother, my dear sister, even though I'm running for time and I am being constrained, but I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is speaking deeply to you. Now, all of you sitting before me, in whichever place you are, you can be a man and a woman that God has been looking for to take to the gates. Yes. Yes, you can be and you will be by the grace of God. But something must happen first. Something has to happen not on you. Not on you. Everything on you is not a challenge. And some of you, you may be here. Even the 
Your hairstyle is that of Rastafarian. Your dress and all of that is not a problem, brother. That's not the, that's not where the problem is. Even if you go, that's not what will defeat you. It's not your hairdo that will defeat you. It is not your dressing that will defeat you. What will defeat you is not on you, is in you. And if we are sincerely looking for the seed that God said, we multiply your seed, and your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies, then, my dear brother and sister, the first thing that must happen must happen inside, not outside. In us, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of the sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That, that, you know, the word that, that started that verse four, we could have put it, so that, in order that, hallelujah, in order that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh. And those that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Let me find out whether uh, either Brad Dennis or Sister Shade can help me read a scripture quickly. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, will you please check if you have good news Bible to help us read? Uh, let me... Uh, Look for that help now. You read for us from verse 3 and read up to verse 8. Good news. Thank you. Okay. Yes, start reading, please. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Yes. Good news, Bible. What the law could not do. Mm because human nature was weak, God did. He condemned sin in human nature by sending his own son who came with a nature like our sinful nature to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us mm -hmm. who live according to the spirit yes. and not according to human nature. Yes. Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God mm -hmm. when they are controlled by their human nature. Mm. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. Oh. So let us note that when I keep talking about the flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the flesh, the word of God that the King James has referred to as the flesh, Mr. Flesh, Mr. Flesh, is what the good news has referred to as the human nature. So if all that you are caring about is the human nature, I must tell you, you are weak. 
not only are you weak, you cannot go and represent God. The reason is because the man you carry inside is the enemy of God himself. You know, as I was looking at Bible, I just see so many analogies in the scripture that I could have just settled in. I remember David one day had a reason to cross over to the camp of the Philistines because Saul was chasing him up and down. When he got to the camp of the Philistines, because the Philistines knew him to be the enemy of the Philistines, they did not forget that it was this David that cut off the heads of their captain, Goliath. They did not forget that it was this David that everybody was singing, Saki 1,000 only. But David gave 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, praise the Lord. The Philistines are still remembering that song. Unfortunately, Saul, having missed out with God, having become, you know, a subservient uh, uh, servant to the devil, he began to chase the man with the seed. He chased the man with the seed out of the kingdom of God. And David found himself in the camp of the Philistines. He had to fail himself. He had to pretend as if he was a madman because they were going to kill him. So he settled into their midst. And he was behaving as if he had become a friend to the Philistine king. And they were going together. So there was a battle. They were going to go and fight against the people of God. And David dressed up in the Philistines' uh, armor. He joined their army. And so they were setting the battle in array. They are going to face Judah. Then the captains of the Philistines, they came and talked to their king. They said, excuse me, sir. They said what? He said, did we see this uh, man called David following us? And the man said, yeah, he has decamped. He has decamped. In fact, he has joined us. He has decided to become the enemy of his master. So that's why he's going with us. Those people, I thank God for their understanding, their wisdom. They said to their king, even in the kingdom of darkness, they know wisdom. You don't go with your enemy to go and fight. He will turn against you on the battlefield. So they said, we can't go with this man. They said, why? The man said, no, he has changed. He's a good man. In fact, he's a warrior. They said, mm. when we get on the field and he sees his people, he will turn against us. He will use our heads to settle his quarrel with his master. We can't have him to go. Whatever mobilization you have given him, let him go back. Let him go back. That's how they will not allow David to go. If he listens, will not allow a man they know who is not one of them. They will not allow him to go with them to battle. How do you think my father God will take you to the gates to go and fight for him? When the man inside of you, Mr. Flesh, is his arch enemy. That's why we are the one who make mistakes. We say that man is a Christian. Mm -mm. God is saying, check his heart. Who is he carrying? Who is he taking? If it is Mr. Flesh, take him to the gate. He will join hand with the devil to fight me. Because whosoever is being led, being directed by his human nature, is an enemy of God. Those who obey the dictates of their human nature, they cannot please God. So the first question that we are dealing with this morning, any man who carries the natural life, any man whose life is only of the flesh, the activities of the flesh have not stopped working in your life. You cannot go to the gate. The reason is because Number one, you are weak. Number two, the man inside of you is an enemy of God. The flesh, any day, any time, 
when he gets to the place of battle, even if he's pretending to love God, pretending to love God, when he gets there, he will show his true color. That's why so many young people, so many older people have betrayed Christ. That's why so many that their Christian names, they have not been able to rot any victory on the earth because the man they carry inside is an enemy. And so the word of God says, those who are in the flesh, they cannot please God. They are the enemy of God. In fact, they cannot obey God. They cannot do it. In the flesh, can. you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, before I go from there, because time, is is back on your me and say we can't go so so far now but let's see where we can stop now that scripture says that i read it from okay do you have your amplified bible again can you help us now read the amplified bible and this is important so that we can set something in order we are looking for the seed the seed that possesses the gate. We're looking for men that God can take out and say, this is my beloved son, hand over to him, hand over to him. Now, please help us read that verse, verse 8, verse 9, verse 10. We're reading the Amplified Bible now. Yes. The Amplified Bible. Romans 8. Yes. 8 to 10. Amplified. So then, those who are living the life of the flesh, mm. catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to Him. Uh -huh. But you are not living the life of the flesh, you are okay. living the life of the spirit. Now, let's take note now. You are not living the life of the flesh, but you are living the life of the spirit. Go ahead, man. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, uh -huh. directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, mm. he is none of his. Mm. He does not belong to Christ. Mm -hmm. He's not truly a child of God. Wow. But if Christ lives in you, mm -hmm. then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. Verse 11. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, mm -hmm. then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. So note the issue now. I've been tracing the seed that possesses the gate. The seed that God said shall possess the gate of his enemy. The seed that God wants to multiply. Take note that I first noted that is the seed, not seeds. Just one seed that must find itself multiplied in several of our lives. And look at the Bible now say, but you are not living the life of the flesh. That's the first thing you have to check. Are you not living the life of the flesh? Are you not living the life that is dictated, controlled, directed, that answers to the appetite and the impulses of the carnal human nature? Are you not 
just responding to the dictates of the human nature everywhere you are going? Are you a man who is not being led by the human nature? Who has now become completely led by the spirit? For only those that are led by the spirit, the Bible said they are the children of God. Now said, but you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really, really dwells within you, we are not just talking of mouth talk. We are not just talking of empty confession. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells, and I want you to know the word really, really dwells within you, directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He is not truly a child of God. But if Christ lives in you, then, although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt, the spirit is alive because of the righteousness that he inputs unto you. So, now, <laughs> this is the point. Who is the man and woman that we can carry to the gate? The one in whom Christ is living, in whom the seed is living. And if the seed is in you, you cannot continue to sin. He said he cannot sin because the seed, his seed remains in him. His seed dwells in him. His seed don't only come occasionally, no, he lives in him. He walks in him. So if I were going to summarize what I, I want to say now before I go away, the Bible is now saying the mystery is this. The mystery is this. Christ in you, the hope, the basis, the expectation of glory. So, you know, I've been begging God since we started praying for Seiko. Because I hear God saying, in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, he wants to multiply the seed. All of you listening to me, wherever you are from, the critical thing that God has to multiply inside of you, all over the nations, is the seed, Christ himself, in you. We have no other thing to multiply. We have no other theory to talk about. We have no other principle to lay before you. The seed that God say your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. That seed, if it is not in you, then you are none of his. If that seed is not in you, then you can't do anything. If it is not that seed that you are carrying, then you are a weak man. Then you are already defeated. Then you are a saboteur. Honestly speaking, you will sabotage the kingdom. If it is your human sense you are carrying, you will sabotage the kingdom because the human nature is an enemy of God already. The human nature will normally betray Christ. So when it was time for Gideon to carry people to the gate, to go and collect the gate from the Midianites, and 32,000 came, to go and face a multitude that have not been, we can't number them. We are even told that the chariots alone that they brought is about 150,000, talk less of those riding them. We are told of the kind of sophisticated weapon they brought. And God looked at Gideon and said, Gideon, these people you have gathered, they are too much for me. You know the meaning of that. They are too much. Number one, I don't need such a multitude to do my work. Number two, I don't need them because what they carry will betray me at the gate. And you see what God said? He said, they are too much. They will vaunt themselves against me. They will say, my hand did it. And anybody that can go to the gate and compete with the glory of God, 
Someone will go there and God will give victory and he will begin to say, now me, do I'm. That man cannot be carried to the gate. Those of you that have that love self-glory, those of you that love self-confidence, and you want something that you can claim and put your name on, you cannot go to the gate and possess it for God because you will decamp. That's the truth. When you get there, Satan will look at you with one eye like this and say, now you descend. He sees you there, you are coming to take over from me. What of Mr. Flesh that is operating in you? Don't you know he's my servant? Please hand over and, and fall in line. And so you find so many people that we thought we stand for God. They already fell in line with the devil. They couldn't be a Daniel. They couldn't be a, an Ezra. God said these people are too much. Just go and announce the first announcement. Is anybody afraid among you? Is anybody among you just married and you, you have not enjoyed your honeymoon? Just go home. If anybody has built a house and you have not yet dedicated it so that no one else would, would sleep there, suddenly all their quiet ambition, all the things that Mr. Flesh has been dreaming about jump. He says, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true, how can I go and kill myself or nothing when I have not enjoyed my house? I've just married and I need to enjoy my wife. I am, I, no, 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 I can't go there. Out of 32,000, 22,000 just left like that for you to know that they have no seed inside of them. God said these 10,000 are still too much. Bring them down. By the time he brought them down and God applied his own test, the test that God applied was the test trying to find out whether self is still here, whether Mr. Flesh is still active. By the time the test was carried out, 9,700 uh, 9, fell. Only 300 were left. 300 that are dead to self. 300 that are dead to pleasure. 300 that are not looking for personal comfort. 300 that could forgot, forget their names. Who can only say the sword of God and the sword of Gideon as if they have no name of their own. 300 that are willing to die. 300 that say, yes, let's go. If we perish, let us perish. 300 in whom Mr. Flesh has been evacuated. And what did God do? He gave them the seed. Each one of them, you will see what happened. They only need to carry an empty pitcher, but there's a light inside, the life light. The life light. And as they broke the pitcher, the light was shining. And Midianites could not stand. I want to ask you this moment. This, the mystery is simple. The seed that must be multiplied is Christ's life at work in you. Christ being the very life that you are carrying. Christ having crucified the flesh and put it aside is now sitting, reigning in your life. It is only that kind of man, that kind of woman that God can take to the gates. And it's only such person that God is asking us to multiply, even in this meeting. As I stop here, I've been saying, Lord, this meeting is becoming global. God said, yes, it's deliberate. It's because all nations, we only be delivered from this particular seed. Every gate of any sector, education in your country can only be delivered through men that carry this seed. Until we raise teachers, principals, head of schools, vice chancellors, who cannot be bought over, who carry the seed until God will put them at the gates. There can be no solution to the problem of education in our countries. There will be no, problem, no, no solution to the problem of politics and governance in our nations until these men that carry this seed have been brought forth. They are the ones that God wants to multiply in this meeting. They are the ones that God has a reason to recruit. And I'm so excited that God wants to do it. 
The reason why Seiko has come to your own locality, and God is not saying all of you travel to Boko, is because all the years we have traveled to Boko, we thank God for all that God has done. You will get testimonies of people that God affected in 2004, 2005, 2006. Those are God touch in South Africa. Those are God touch in Ghana. Those are God touch in these different places as they came. But God is saying, that is not strategic enough. I need this to get to the grassroots because I must raise men. I must multiply the seed. So in all the places where you are listening, and whether you are even listening in your private room or in your car, the Holy Spirit is about to change your situation. It's about to change the species of life you carry. What made you weak? What made you always under the law of sin and death is the flesh that was inside. And God sent his son. He took upon the nature so that he can condemn sin in the flesh, so that he can uproot the enemy, so that he can abolish it. Not only that, so that he can exchange it with his own life. Christ living in you, the seed resident in you, the seed overcoming in you, the seed reigning in you, the seed being the life that you carry about. That is the seed that will possess the nations. That is the seed that will possess the gates. That is the seed that God is going to take out. When we come back, and I'll take the next of this uh, series of team talk, I will go ahead and begin to see the match, the match of the seed to the gates. But we must not make a mistake to include you when you don't have his life. Whosoever does not have the spirit of Christ is none of his. And Galatians 5 says, those that belong to Christ Jesus, they have crucified the flesh with his passion and his desires. So this morning, as I stop to pray, and as I ask you to pray, because after here, we are going to go to be alone with God for a few minutes. But you cannot do that until you make a personal decision. I want you to check now. This is not about people around you. This is not on you. This is in you. The weakness is not around you. The weakness is inside. And what God came out to do this morning, when he said, in multiplying, I will multiply your seed, is to evacuate the weakness, the enmity within. Mr. Flesh, that has hindered you from being what God wants you to be. You couldn't stand where your colleagues were uh, participating in exam practice, all because the man in you is weak. So if you talk now, everybody will be looking at you and say, hey, are you the only one you doing? So that's why you kept quiet. That was why you compromised. Because the man you carry is weak. He's weak. He can't stand for God. In fact, I'm telling you, in a little while, he will decamp and join the enemy's camp and sing their song or pretend to be a Christian. This morning or this afternoon or this evening, regardless of where you are, I want you to now pray. The seed that possess the gate is the seed that I must carry from here. Anything less than that, no. God wants to multiply this seed in Russia. He wants to multiply it in India. He would like to multiply it in Indonesia. Is going to um, uh, all the countries of the of the of the east to multiply that seed. God wants to multiply that seed in the Mediterranean. God wants to multiply that seed in Europe, in America, in Latin America, in Central America. So those of you that are listening in Hungary, those of you that are part of this in uh, Belize, those of you that are following in Mexico, everywhere you are. God wants to multiply that seed. And how does he want to multiply that seed? 
by first and foremost taking away the weakness, Mr. Flesh, in us so that he can find a space. And that's the mystery, Christ in you. Christ in you, Christ at work in you, Christ living in you, Christ speaking in you, Christ reigning in you, Christ teaching in you, Christ, Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's the substance of the message. That's what God wants to multiply. That's the seed that will possess the gates. If you are going to be part of this, something must be done in you this morning. Will you please stand up and let us pray together? We are going to be praying. And the prayer I wanted to pray is a very simple prayer. What kind of life have I been living? If you have been living the life of the flesh, responding to the dictates of the human nature, even your desire to go and, uh, and get a PhD is the desire that I will show off. I want to prove that I'm the best uh, educated in my village. And all such cannot. Because when you now get to the point when people challenge you, since that's your ambition, you are likely to compromise. You are likely to plagiarize other people's work. You are likely to doctor the, 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 the data so that you can get a good curve. Because you can't go through what it needed to be going, going through because Mr. Flesh is not concerned about righteousness. This morning, wherever you are, stand up, we are praying together. And we are pleading with God and say, God, I want to be relevant in my generation. But what will make you relevant is the seed. If the seed is not in you, you are none of his. If his life does not dwell in you, you can't make it. You are likely to become a saboteur tomorrow. So let's agree together this moment that, Lord, all I'm crying for, the seed. Take away from me the flesh that has made me weak. The flesh that will make me tell lies when I should have stood up for the truth. The flesh that all that can give in when, when a boy is making face to me. The flesh that will make me almost a piece of bread when I meet women. The flesh that makes money to be something that I can exchange my birthright with. This morning, Father, I need a touch. We are praying. And you know the miracle that I sense will happen this morning is that God sent his son. God has already sent his son. He did not withhold his son. So the multiplying of that seed, there is already a basis for it. There's already a basis for it. You can be part of that seed that will be multiplied today because he did not withhold his own son. Because Jesus already laid down his life. That's why we can reap and harvest of many sons to be brought into glory. You can be free from the flesh this morning, not tomorrow, not next week, today, because God sending his own son. And it's very touching to me that he's not just sending his own son, he's sending his own son, that seed, to take his residence in your heart. That is about to happen now. If you only open up and say, now, Jesus, I now realize that it's not the external. It's not what is on me that is my problem. What is in me is the problem. It's not what is around me that is the problem. It's what is inside of me that has been my problem. This moment, would you like to bow as we pray together? Let's pray. I would like to pray first. But as I'm praying, all of you that have listened to the word of God, you knew that what is in you was a problem. What has been operating in you was a problem. The human nature, the flesh has been the matter. And if it is not taken out and Christ coming in, the new creation coming in, you cannot be the man that we can take to the gates. No matter how we talk, if you go to ICT, you will still fumble. But we need such seed that will go to the gate. We are praying right now. Father, this morning, please arise in our midst. 
we ask you, Lord, to stretch forth your hand in this meeting. The promise you made that has given us courage, you said, in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. Thank you, Lord, that the time to do it, as you promise your son, has now come. And we see you making it possible that all over the world, be it in Namibia, Botswana, be it in Mexico, Belize, be it in Toronto, in Canada, be it in the US, be it, oh God, in Europe, in UK, in Hungary, in all the places, and all of Africa, we see you ready now to multiply that seed. Father, honor your word this morning. Multiply that seed in this meeting. As many as are hearing me, oh God, who have carried the life of the flesh, and they are saying, today must be the end of it. Father, in, in fulfillment of your promise, say, if I be lifted up, if I put on the cross, I will draw all men. Do it now. Do it now by yourself. Let the death of Jesus Christ become actively at work in our midst now. Thank you, Father. Whatever the flesh has done, whatever atrocities are produced, whatever wrong things he has brought about, the works of the flesh, thank you this morning, oh God, that you are willing to discard it, abolish it, and put it behind and give us a new beginning. Thank you. Lord, all those who have heard you this morning, since we started hearing you from the devotional challenge onto the prayer tips, now, oh God, we must make a response. And I ask, Lord, that no one will be held back. What we are looking for now is not external thing upon us. It is the in, what is inside, that if you don't deal with, how could we carry that seed with a contradiction inside? Please do a work now. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Now, as many of us as are praying, and wherever you are, you've realized that the weakness of your life is that which is in you. Said the flesh is weak. It has weakened everything. Even when you read the Bible, you know the Bible is true, but you cannot obey the Bible because Somebody in you has weakened it. It doesn't allow it to work for you. That's what God wants to put this morning. And if you are saying, Lord, deliver me from the flesh. Deliver me from the enemy within. Wherever you are, I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to lift up your right hand and say, oh God, now you have come on this matter again. This matter again, only the seed can overcome. So they cannot sin because the seed of God remains in them. Say, so greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have overcome them. The overcomer is the seed. This morning, O oh Lord, we are coming to you. All those that are saying, I have seen the matter now. I can't hide it. I can't cover it again. All the works of the flesh, whether fornication, lying, anger, whatever it was, it was because that man was inside. Can you come before the Lord? Can you lift up those hands and say, Lord, here am I. Do a new thing in my life today. Abolish the enemy within. And if you are doing so, you have lifted that hand above your head, please raise it because I'm, I want to call on God with you now. The next step to take, please, my friend, it's not time to look at someone else. It's looking on to God and say, I must be the man that carried the seed. I can't go to be struggling at the gate. I cannot become a saboteur at the gate. I cannot become a failure, defeated inside. This morning, do a new thing in my life. Can you stretch forth your hand and come forward? Just come to the altar. I have one minute more to pray this prayer. God bless you. Please walk out. I've seen several hands lifted above your head. Just now step out before God. Walk in, walk out, and say, Lord, today is my day. Thank you, my friend. Just keep coming out. Just walk out. Thank you, friend. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, dear sister. Just walk out from different places where you are. 
You say, but why is God talking to me? It's because in that constituency where you are, in that nation where you are, in that department where you are, in that sector where you are, in that profession where you are, in that career where you are, God needs to put in the seed that can possess the gate. And God has brought you into this meeting because he wants to use you, wants to pass through you. That's the mystery. Thank you, my friends. As you have lifted the hands, just come forward. Just keep coming so that we can pray together. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you. Just keep coming. And all those that have come, please leave the hand above your head. Permit me to call on God on your behalf. Yes, that today, that which is the enemy within must be abolished. That which is the work of the flesh must be uprooted. That the seed that can win. You see, you may say, but I'm a young girl. That's not what will defeat you. David was 17 years old when he dealt with Goliath because of the different heart he carries. A small girl like you, a small brother like you, a young man like you, a young lady like you can put the enemy to rout depending on the seed that you carry. Thank you, my, my brother. Thank you, my dear sister. There are still some that need to walk out. Please do so quickly because I will be pronouncing a word of prayer. And then our brothers and sisters are standing already around the altar. They will step for their hands, even as I do here, that the Lord Almighty will begin to do the miraculous. Lord, we are asking you for the miraculous. You sending your son, since you did not withhold your son, but you freely gave him. This is why these ones must be brought into glory. This is why they can no longer be under the tyranny of the flesh or of the devil. This is why they can no longer be subjected to the principles of the law of sin and death. This is why they must be lifted into a new pedestal of life right from this afternoon. Because your death at the cross settled it. That's why this matter must be settled this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all those that you are multiplying in the nations. All those that you are multiplying all across Nigeria. All across. From different churches, different denominations. Because you said in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. Thank you that this seed is being multiplied this morning again. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, all those that have stepped out, all those that have stepped for their hands, and they are saying, all I'm looking for is exchange. Exchange of the old nature for your very life. Take away the seed, the human nature, and put within me the seed that conquers the seed of your own very life, Christ's life. Let it be so right away, Lord. I ask, Father, that this new creation life will begin to have expression from this meeting deliberately. Thank you. Lord, and those that have come and said, Lord, take away all that I have been, all that I've struggled with, all that has been the, 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 the ruin of my life, all that had dented my life, and brought a spot onto my garment. Take it away, Lord. And as we plead for the blood of Jesus, and as we plead that the dead that he died, let it produce this newness. Do it for us now. And Lord, as we go to be alone with you, as we go for a time of cancer, Holy Spirit, please undertake for us and cause the name of the Lord Jesus to be glorified in our time. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, let me quickly request all those that have come out before you go to be alone with God as others are going to go. Can you quickly walk out and the brothers and sisters who are standing behind you there, they will go out with you. Is a very great beginning. I say you are entering to the beginning of something that will make you great in the hand of God. So you can't walk back again. You have walked out of the old nature and you are walking in into the new Christian life. 
and God himself. The mystery is this. He said, Christ in you is the hope of the glory we are looking for. Thank you, Father. Please walk out with the brethren and all our hands, all our counselors. Please just first meet with them for now. Pray with them before they go to be alone with God. And as we do that now, as we do that now, the rest of us, uh, Daniel, you will still allow us to go alone with God, even if it's for the next 10 minutes, so that we can do that and then go for our Bible study at 12. I'm trusting that by 1.30, we should be finishing the study. God bless you. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Like we have said, or we have heard, we'll go for our alone with God now. Those of us who have responded to the altar call just now, we request that you just spend a few minutes outside and someone will attend to you very quickly. But the rest of us will spend 10 minutes to be alone with God, just to sit alone and um, internalize the things that God is saying to you as an individual. This is not a time to play with your phone or discuss with your friend. It's a time to be alone, praying and thinking, meditating on what God has begun to say to your own life as a person. And immediately after that, by 12 o'clock, we'll break into our different Bible study groups and our local leaders will help us on that. Thank you very much. Let's go for our alone with God now. If you can sit on your seat, that's fine. If you can find a quiet area somewhere around your camp, that would be very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> 